Gold for Freeman, silver for Graham, and the bronze for Catherine Berry. Catherine, where are you? Well, I am backstage and I'm taking the exact route that all the athletes will take here this afternoon to come into the Calvin Hall Arena. They would have come from the warm-up into the final call area. This is where the athletes will really start to focus on the performance they have to deliver this afternoon. They will make their way closer and closer to the bright lights, closer and closer to the noise you guys are hopefully going to make when they arrive. On our right-hand side, they will pass the media area, but there'll be no interviews until the event is over. Hopefully, they'll have some good quotes after some good performances. And then the bright lights of the Calvin Hall hit the athletes they start to get a bit nervous but they start to get very excited indeed about taking part in this the Aviva International match as you can imagine ladies and gentlemen it is pretty hectic around the fastest man in the world he has just run a fast 100 meters he has just been dancing Usain Bolt do you feel like a rock star here tonight yeah I definitely do it's all Jamaican fans it's just electric in Crystal Palace so alive with colour, so alive with noise. 9.91 seconds, a major headwind once again. You're going to Berlin on a super duper one-man mission. Yeah, yeah, definitely I'm going to Berlin on a mission. I'm happy of the time. I don't know what the, what the win was, but I'm just happy I got through it, injury free and it was good. And I just had to say, your fans, it's, it's, this is the best I've ever been here. Crystal Palace is crazy. The energy of the crowd is just wonderful, guys. Thank you. And I love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, let's send him down the home straight on that continuing lap of honor. Your 100 meter winner, the fastest man ever. You enjoyed it, didn't you? Usain Bolt. The thoughts of the time bridge are well and truly in the memory banks. They're running with some rhythm and hopefully keeping a little bit in the tank. My mission is to chat to as many of the runners as possible, please. Chris, explain what this is all about. Well, we just thought we'd uh, have a bit of a challenge for each other, to try and get around as quickly as we can, backwards and forwards. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's quite a challenge. It's been hard so far. It's very, very hot. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's a bit warm. <laughs> the one day of the year where it's hot. I caught up with him a couple of times over the weekend and, and had a chat with him and I started actually by asking Usain how he's learning to cope with the expectations and the pressure that he's going to have in 2009. For me, it's okay. Uh, I know what I did last season. I know people are really looking for me to coming out this season, doing even better, doing the same. So it's pressure, yes, but uh, I'm not going to take it as much, and I'm just going out there to do my best at all times. But life's changed, hasn't it, dramatically for you. Tell us, what's it like in Jamaica on a daily basis for you? What's this about undercover policemen looking after you and you can't go to the bank because it takes so long for the autograph hunters and all that? Well, uh, yeah, when I went back, I uh, thought uh, the, the sport, the Minister of Sport decided I should get some some security to walk around with me for crowd control, really, to make sure I could get things done. And it's still hard to get things done, but I know why people just want to get autographs and stuff, so I do take pictures of autographs, but I can get nothing done, so I just send my friends if I don't need to go on the street. We saw in Beijing, though, cracking dancer, I must say, and your dad takes all the credit for that, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he, he tries to take credit for everything I do. Uh, he says we're well, a good runner also, so I, I was, I'm not sure about that, but hey. <laughs> Welcome, Catherine, to the yeah. show properly. Because, coincidentally, I believe you are you are coached by Mr. Christie, are you? I am, yeah, luckily, yeah. The the the, the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you had a peep in that? In Limford's lunchbox? Yeah. No, no, I've never eaten. No, I don't know. I think you misunderstand. I actually caught up with Tyson this week and we had a, a chat about a few things, um, including those Berlin World Championships. And I actually started off by asking him if he would understandably change one or two things about his Berlin experience. I don't think I would change anything. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, everyone wants to win. But, you know, I have my own victory because the pain I was in when I was running, my groin was hurt, you know, needing surgery. And still be able to run that 7-1 and get a silver, you know, really means a lot to me. I'm going to throw it forward three years. You have to imagine now. We're in London, 2012, the men's 100 Olympic final. Lane three, Usain, the entertainer Bolt. Lane four, 
Tyson, the quiet one gay representing the USA. In lane five, hopefully a British guy. Now, if I put my hard-earned 100 English pounds, Tyson, on lane four, which is you, to run 9.49 and bring home the gold medal, I think that would be a pretty safe bet, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm being serious. I know you are, and that's why I, I will put my hard-earned 100 English pounds on you. It's funny you say that because um, myself and John Drummond, you know, he has, like, scientific facts that the human body can possibly run 9-4, you know, and um, we've thought about it. And I don't think about running 9-4, like, oh, I'm going to run 9-4, like, but it's the point that I don't think nothing is impossible. Over 21,000 runners are eagerly waiting on the start line to tackle this 10-mile course. We will have hundreds of thousands of pounds raised for good causes. We have some celebrities taking part as well. And we also have two cracking lineups in the elite races. Did you expect such a sprint finish over a 10-mile course? Not at all. You know, the, guy, the boys made it really hard for me. They were looking at the back and my sure I was there and then they couldn't. They got rid of me at one point and then I came back at them. And then what they wanted to do, just get rid of me. We're going to show you a quick replay, Mo. I want you to talk us through, one, what was going through your mind as you and Stephen Makoko were battling for the, for the title here today. Word on the street has it that you're quite awesome at this, so no pressure. <laughs> See? I'm bound to fail now. <laughs> and now she only needs eight points to beat Steve Redgrave's record. This would be a fabulous start to Superstars Archery. Oh, she's blown the record apart. Catherine Merry scores a maximum for a new record.